I'm going to get laid off. Automatically, what do people think? My next job, I'm going to make less. Yep. Instead of like, oh, God, I'm finally free from these people. I can go make more. Today, we're going to show you how to retire in 10 years or less and still be financially free for the rest of your life. It would interest you to know that as complex and impossible as this may sound, there's a simple and basic concept behind it that anyone can apply. In fact, it's so basic that we'd cover everything you need to know in the next 15 minutes or less. If you doubt me, just stick to the end of the video to see for yourself. Now, I bet you're wondering, well, if it's that easy, then how come almost nobody is doing it? Or why is it that only 1% of people ever get to achieve this feat in their career? Well, that's just what we'll discuss in the later parts of this video. Most people don't know how to start or what to do. But I'll show you exactly how to start and also give you the full blueprint and resources you need to make this dream a reality. It's all up to you to apply and make it work. So sit back and watch as we show you how to make your retirement dream come true much earlier than expected. So like I said, early retirement with financial settlement is not so difficult. Anyone can do it. But do me a favor. Forget about that notion that retirement only happens in your 60s and 70s. This is the first mental block that needs to go out of the way if you're ever going to drive your dream car or live your dream life long before your mates retire in active service. Done that? Good. Now let's begin. Number one, income savings ratio. Now, I know this might sound contrary to popular belief, but when it comes to financial freedom, it truly doesn't matter how much money you make. What truly matters is how much money you spend. Picture this. Let's say you're earning $1,000 every month, but spending $900 on living expenses and all of that stuff. You're only left with $100 at the end of every month. Meanwhile, someone else is earning just $400, but spending only $200 on expenses, so that he can save up the remaining $200. Now, over the course of 12 months, who do you think will have more money? Multiply that by 10 years, and who will be richer? Of course, it's the smart guy who's spending and saving just the same amount. The huge car, expensive car, the vastly expensive purse, the vastly expensive vacation on Instagram are very seldom actual indicators of wealth. You see, true financial freedom isn't how much you earn, but it's how much you save at the end of the day. It's never a good life if you're earning large sums of money, yet you have nothing to show. By nothing to show, I don't mean fancy cars or luxurious houses. These things do not translate to real wealth because over the years, they depreciate in value. But sadly, most people think being rich is about buying sports cars and Gucci watches so that they can show off on social media. Here's the secret. If you want to be financially free enough to retire early, even in your 20s, try not to get too carried away with how much cash you're making. Even if you're earning a fortune, spend like you're not. The truth is, no one would know the difference between a $5 shirt and a $500 shirt. Unless you're so bent on impressing others, there's no shame in buying used cars or $5 shirts or renting out a part of your house to earn some extra cash. These steps may seem small, but they cut off so many unnecessary costs and they allow you to build up wealth in a very short time. Just look at billionaire CEOs of today, the likes of Dave Ramsey, Mark Zuckerberg, and others. They typically do not wear fancy shirts or drive fancy cars. Everything is kept simple. Dave Ramsey puts it best. A typical millionaire lives in a middle-class home, drives a two-year-old or older paid-for car, and buys blue jeans at Walmart. Even if wearing a $5 shirt or jeans isn't your thing, the bottom line is that you must pay more attention to your spending than your earnings. Oh, and there's one other thing you must pay attention to, too. Number two, saving consistently. Even if you're spending less, without consistent savings, it will all come crashing down. Some people save this month, and the next month it's party or enjoyment month. So, zero savings. This is wrong. Consistent savings will help you calculate how long it will take you to retire. So, you at least have a target in mind. If you're spending 100% of your income, you'll always have nothing. So, you'll never be able to retire on time. 
Meanwhile, if you can focus on saving 25% of your income every month, you will be able to retire in 32 years and still maintain the current standard of living. If you raise that number to 50%, you can retire in 17 years with no worries. But if you can save 70 to 75% of your income, you'd beautifully retire in 8 to 10 years. And so, overall, the higher percentage of your savings, the faster you can retire and live free. There are many things your work life doesn't allow you to do. There are lots of things you want to explore, but can't until you're work free and financially free. But for your perfect dream to come true, you must save. Saving can be very difficult, especially if you're not conservative by nature. And so, if you're a lavish spender, try to take your mind away from buying stuff you don't need. Teach yourself to find satisfaction in investing large sums of money rather than spending on momentary pleasures. It, the only way you delay momentary pleasure is, is based on the nobility of your vision, the nobility of your goal. If my goal is to change my family tree, I can give up purchasing some stupid thing that I can't afford on payments. So I think you need to stop and think and be intentional about where you're going and also, more importantly, why you're going there. One of the things that changed our lives. You see, momentary pleasures and spending is one thing that separates the poor from the rich. A famous quote says, the rich stay rich by spending like the poor. The poor stay poor by spending like the rich. Now, you may wonder where the rest of the money the rich doesn't spend goes to. Savings and investments, of course. It takes practice. Even financial experts like Dave Ramsey admit that they were once akin to the lavish consumption lifestyle until life hit hard, and they learned the hard way to save and invest. All you need to do is have a change of heart and then do it once. Next, repeat the process again and again, and before you know it, your savings would become great enough to cover all of your living expenses. It's what Dave Ramsey did. It's what millions of other successful young men and women out there are doing, and it all starts with you. But the truth is that saving becomes really easy when you are spending so little. This brings us to our next point. Number 3. Cut Back Spending Dave Ramsey rightly said, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. There's no way to overemphasize this. Every little cent you save counts. So try to reduce your spending as much as possible. Doing this will be easy if you stop trying to compete with other people. Now I'm not saying you should sell your car and trek to work or sell your house. I'm simply saying try to cut off liabilities and preserve only assets. If your car is a liability, it'd have to go. If not, keep it. If your house is too much of a liability, what is actually the case most times, then try renting off a part of your home so the financial burden on you becomes lessened. This simple strategy is known as house hacking. It's very helpful, especially when you're living alone or when you have a mortgage to pay off. It works best for large properties like duplexes. You simply live on one floor and rent off the other. And if you play your cards right with house hacking, the other guy may just end up paying for the entire cost of that building altogether, meaning you got a free home. And guess what? This hacking can apply to other things too, like your car. Instead of a luxurious truck, go for a used car that won't depreciate much over the next couple of years. Also, instead of spending flight tickets from your wallet all the time, take advantage of credit card bonuses. The most important of all is spending on food. Homemade food will always be more cash friendly than eating out. These are some vital hacks that can help ease your savings process because once you do these, you'll automatically have lots of leftover cash, which you can pump into savings. Oh, and here's my personal trick. Learn to wait out your instantaneous desires. Sometimes, if you want to buy something you don't need, maybe an ice cream or a smartphone, try to delay that thought for a few hours, days, or maybe a week. Eventually, the desire for that particular item will just fade out naturally. Here's a Dave Ramsey quote for extra motivation. You must gain control over your money or the lack of it will forever control you. Number 4. Avoid High Interest Rate Debt If there's one financial freedom message you'll always hear Dave Ramsey preach about, it's to repent from borrowing, especially loans with high interest. High interest loans can cripple your finances and keep you a slave for life. One of Dave Ramsey's best advice on borrowing is this. I tell everyone never to take out more than 15-year fixed rate loans, 
and never have a payment of over 25% of your take-home pay. That is the most you should ever borrow. Even if you're cutting back in saving, a high interest debt could literally swallow up all of your hard earned savings in the twinkle of an eye, making the entire process futile. Now, I'm not just talking about credit cards here. It could be medical debt, student loans, mortgages, and so on. In worst case scenarios, it would take you several years to break even before you can now start actually having some true savings into your accounts. Borrowing too much money pulls away from your goal of financial independence. And so, if you must retire early, stop borrowing. Or borrow very little debts that you can pay back in a heartbeat. One hack that can help you is to stay away from credit cards. I don't like inflation. I don't want that to take your check away from you. But don't be a victim. You're not a victim. You're a victim of the person in your mirror. And the idea, here's, here's another plan. If you think getting into debt to maintain your lifestyle is going to maintain your lifestyle, there's an end to that. Mm -hmm. there, there's a mathematical end to that. It eventually comes, and it's a boomerang, comes back around, smacks you in the head and says, hey, dummy. So, you see, if you must borrow, go for very low interest loans or only leverage on unique debts that you make extra money when you don't pay them off. For example, having a 3% mortgage on a rental property that makes 9% interest is a cash advantage to you. This is the kind of debt that some financial experts call good debt. However, if you can stay away from debt altogether, as Dave Ramsey advises, your route to financial freedom will be much shorter and stress-free. Invest Investing is something you've certainly heard a thousand times from financial experts, but it is still something that most people get completely wrong. You don't necessarily have to buy Bitcoin. You can take advantage of simple things like HSA accounts or simply put your money into a long-term investment like stocks. This would require a risk-taking mindset, just cut out a percentage of your income, throw it into a suitable long-term investment, and forget about it. If you're not sure what investments will work well for you, you can check out any of our investment videos on this channel. You'd surely find something that relates to you well. Here's some quick info. Investing long-term is the most lucrative but requires the most patience and discipline. I'm not that much younger than you. I'm 62 going on three, and all of my investments are in mutual funds and in real estate. None of it is sitting in the bank, or the, I've got money sitting in the bank, but it's business money for the operations of this company, not money that I'm counting on for retirement. Now, you know some of the important things you need to know about early retirement. Let's touch on a few remaining things. What if you want to retire faster? say in the next five to seven years? Well, either make a lot more money or spend a lot less money. Pick one. However, note that if you intend to live lavishly after retirement, then your savings alone may be insufficient unless you're earning a million dollars worth of cash. But another way this could work is if you start a side hustle after retirement. There are many of these out there. You could create social media content or start a YouTube channel sell products online, the list goes on and on. So in short, if you're not earning so much from your regular job, you may still need to spend wisely after retirement or pick up a side hustle. However, if your salary is massive, you only need to save about 60% for the next 10 years. And voila, you're financially set for life. If you're not in the rich gang or the million dollar job category, I advise that you get a job that pays you based on your results and not based on your time. In other words, find a way to earn an income, not a salary. A time-based job will only give you a limited amount of money that can be earned per day. Meanwhile, with results-based jobs, earnings are limitless. For instance, let's say you're into affiliate marketing. You only get paid when you sell a product, not based on how many hours you work. So, you could focus on selling more lucrative items with better commissions, or get people to help you sell more products to enjoy more profits. There are a million similar cases to this, where the work doesn't take more time or effort, but can bring more profits. Take a YouTube channel, for instance. All I have to do is make a video and then publicize it to reach more people. The more people I reach, the more money I make, even with one video. And the money keeps coming every month. Another hot tip I'll give you is to think like a creator and not like a consumer. Creators give and consumers buy. 
So start giving, create your own videos, write your own ebooks, and start your own business. Start building value no matter how small. If you're hellbent on retiring in 19 years, here's my financial advice. Earn at least $150,000 a year. Live off of $22,000 a year. Save or invest the rest. In 10 years, you'll be thanking me. Real estate is a good investment to boost your earnings even further and reach your retirement goal even faster. Real estate is a wonderful place to put money, folks, especially right now. It's a good time to buy real estate, whether you're doing it as an investment, whether you're buying a home. If you're not earning up to $50,000 a year, your retirement dream is a bit far-fetched. You have to increase your income, learn a new skill, start a side hustle, or do a side job if you can handle it. It's all a numbers game. You must slowly increase your income while keeping your spending steady or neutral and then save and invest consistently. But remember, only you can make it happen. As Ramsey rightly said, winning at money is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. What to do isn't the problem, doing it is. Most of you know what to do, but we just don't do it. If I can control the guy in the mirror, I can be skinny and rich.